looking underneath for uh, some material about the uh, Palestinian sports people and their lives and how it contrasted with those of the of the Israeli athletes, um, I came across a beautiful story, which I'd like, just like to quote a paragraph from because it's uh, quite relevant. Uh, it's written by Iqbal Tamimi, a Palestinian journalist who lives in exile, and she did a lot of the interviews for the articles through the internet and through telephone calls because it was actually very difficult to connect up with the sports people she was trying to write about, which included the uh, Palestinian women's soccer team that uh, was based in the, that was based in the Gaza. These people, the Palestinian women's soccer team, couldn't get together because they were often uh, they, the players from the West Bank or the Gaza couldn't meet together. The fields would be destroyed. The soccer fields would be destroyed during the various military incursions, just quite gratuitously, not because there was any particular fighting, but just gratuitously destroy them as a, to teach a lesson to the Palestinian people, as the military said. And last year, remember, after this uh, tournament, um, this player was denied entry to uh, United Arab Emirates, one of the countries, um, for a for a particular tournament, <coughs> and this is Dubai. Uh, Dubai, and uh, and she and she writes, many people were enraged that one Israeli player was denied a visa to Dubai to the tennis tournament held lately, claiming sport should be independent of politics. But it seems not many understood how important it is to boycott Israel's sport to make a point. Israel bombed the Palestinian playing courts, banned Palestinian players from travel or participation, imprisoned and detained Palestinian players, attacked many of them. And these facts can be brought up and made known should Israel be boycotted. Israel's policies are aimed at killing any hope of Palestinians participating in any sport where they can represent their country on an international level. One of the most extraordinary facts I picked up was that in the, in the Special Olympics before last, a Palestinian was refused the visa, refused the right to leave the country to represent Palestine at the Special Olympics. This athlete had Down syndrome uh, and required special permission from the Israeli authorities to attend the Special Olympics, and that was refused because this athlete would have been participating in those Olympics under the flag of Palestine. Such is the fear that that state has of Palestine as an idea, let alone the Palestine as an entity. Because they keep saying we must recognize Israel. Which Israel? Nobody actually says. Whether the 48 Israel, the 67 Israel, the 73 Israel, whichever Israel they want us to represent, they say we must recognize that state. Do we recognize that state's annexation of Jerusalem? Well, no other state in the world recognizes the annexation, not even the United States recognizes the annexation of Jerusalem. Yet for Israel, the Israeli state, which they insist we recognize, the Israeli state includes Jerusalem. But no country in the world recognizes the border that the Israeli state has put around the city of Jerusalem. So where is the logic of their insistence we recognize the state of Israel? We, like the rest of the world, know the state of Israel exists. 